look at the kind of companies that come in and what this exchange is trying to serve, what are the buckets that you would put the potential investors at? Within the HNI also, I would say there are three classes of investors. One within HNI who would go for large issues, which is funded, uh, and of course their exit plan is within one week of listing. So of course this is not the uh, meant for them. Then the second class of HNI, which typically we need here, is kind of a slightly educated HNI class who understands. Then only you can sell this. As what he very rightly said, any debt instrument has a recourse. Here there is no recourse. Mm. Even if there is corporate governance, one needs to understand the basic difference between a linear uh, return in any other asset class and a stock which gives return over one week out of 52 <coughs> weeks but compensates and rather gives more. So that kind of understanding. So within HNI, we don't need that ultra HNI. We don't need retail retail. We need a mid educated HNI class which I definitely feel is existing and with uh, proper effort put in it is possible. But I think in this entire thing which we are talking about like we are talking about corporate governance, yes it is important. So I am saying in the first issue which we did, corporate governance issue, crystal 5 out of 5 rating, company has taken money, put it into the right place, all text, why investor has not made money? Hmm. That market making aspect is still not covered or exploited enough to find out a reasonably good solution to that. And that is how the new investors will not enter this. Hmm. Obviously, you thought of this when you went in for the first issue. Tell me, what are the options to make the market, to, for, for the market making? What are the options to tap into if you were to make the liquidity aspect uh, covered? It again comes from the same question again and again. You need to have more number of companies. So, more number of companies, more number of class of investor groups, whether organized QIPs or promoted by PSU banks or insurance companies, more number of specialized mutual funds, they are playing within each other. So I have one class of investor who has a different perception, automatically market making will start, means automatically trading will start between the qualified investor and automatically the pressure on market maker will. And in a sense, are we, are we jumping the gun? Even before you were actually uh, taking that step forward, you are trying to compare it to a capital market that's been there, which has gone through its ups, downs, learnings, pain, bloodletting and everything, and you're comparing it with a far more experienced set of investors, a more experienced platform. But my second question to you is that when you're looking at, you know, I, I think when you're looking at comparisons of, of the Canadian exchange or, or the uh, Korean exchange, what was crucial was one of the key pivot points around which that exchange developed was the venture capitalist who not only looked at it as an exit route but also an entry route. And in the last panel it was very clear that they are looking at more as an exit route and not an entry route. At the, at the most basic level, the people who get directly benefited from, from an exchange like this are the venture capitalists. So in a sense, can you have an exchange and a development of, a, of an asset class without their buy-in as uh, people who would also want to enter and not just exit? Uh, there are uh, two uh, two issues uh, regarding that. One is that I don't think the current regulations mm. allow for a certain set of investors to have a differential rights. Sure. I think it is quite critical. If you are saying that let's ring fence governance as one of the key parameters and which will draw in investors, the issue is that by a concept of almost a concept of co-investment, you can get in other kind of investors. Now coming back to a private equity venture capital. First of all, private equity, the ticket sizes are larger. So let's call the, let's talk about venture capital then. In venture capital, one is, they also have a quasi ticket size issue when it comes to these issues. So one has to have the ticket size issue. Second one is we have to look at it, I'm saying concrete steps because you know we can discuss about you know, global things but yeah, let us sure. come to sort of one, two, three, four, five that can be done. The second thing is, about dilution because if today the the uh, the market cap of the company is small i fail to understand why would a promoter you know be willing to dilute a lot of its company to raise a small amount of capital now in Tejo's case they did not require the capital so it's a separate thing if you don't require the capital you are essentially a steady state company but if you are getting companies which require capital and dilution is the way of life if you want to grow 
then if i dilute you know 25% at this stage you know then where do i go because i will be you know i will be less than 10% by the time i reach any level hmm. so second issue is that you know this minimum public shareholding has to be looked at it differently uh, mr bangarwar let me uh, uh, bring you into this conversation two questions one is that when you were looking at the first issue how did you try and look at this is, uh, aspect of governance because the the general sense is sme is equal to bad governance uh, and, right. and opaqueness right. but but my point is i know from the beginning from from the time this exchange was ended such i think crystal and nsc were working uh, very very hard to try and get the corporate governance standards going on this so in a sense the leg work for that has been you know two years in advance of the exchange actually come is that a myth that sme equals bad governance or no. is is this uh, exchange allowing you know some bit of uh, checks and balances out there no i would put it the way you look at it if you are nscs position it rightly that they would give the corporate governance as the top priority the same way as we as a merchant banker i think then there is no problem you have a choice to select that kind of company and it was matched with the thought process of mr george maybe not too many companies will initially will have but i am sure as the way progresses as anup has said the corporate governance is the most important aspect for success everybody will fall in line and only thing if we can reduce the initial cost initial hesitation the care cost or crucial cost or whatever other things i think it will give a lot of uh, things that's rightly nsc has done in fact in our other issues also uh, we have said that this is uh, important requirement and on a continuous basis we do that mm. but i also had to agree on one more point that vcp funds if the special rights are recognized and they are recognized through articles or through the transparent process i think it will give long way to this exchange to grow and this uh, this platform to grow right because it will help and more and more funds will be able to attract so i i think uh, that that's a pretty exhaustive list of things to do uh, at at the core of it is the fact that before it becomes a a lucrative asset class for capital market investors it has to first become a big platform and only with more companies listing and more stakeholders participating in it will it really become attractive and liquid well uh, thank you so much for joining us today thank you, thank you.